Okay, I think we got a good group. Um, let me get things kicked off. Got a lot of content to cover today. Um, really just wanna thank everybody for joining us today to start talking about Microsoft 365 Copilot to get AI ready. What we'll do is we'll go through the strategies and steps to successfully implement Microsoft 365 Copilot, go over a lot of different features like licensing and just try to get everyone to get a better understanding for it. Uh, my name is Jeff Napersky. I'm one of the senior professional services engineers here at uh, Winslow, focusing on the Microsoft stack. Um, any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to put them in the chat. We'll do our best to get to them, or if not, we'll be reaching out after the webinar to happy to get you situated and get those questions answered for you. Um, also, at the end, there there is a, a chance for you to win a Yeti cooler, so um, we'll reach out to the winner uh, once that gets all finalized and let you know if you won. So without further ado, talking a little bit about Winslow, um, we really like to make IT personal. Um, all of us here on the team at the end of the day, we really take it to heart to try to make the best possible outcomes for our customers. At the end of the day, we all have a passion. We're experts in our own field. So like we said, our, our mission is to really have um, good outcomes at the end of the day and have good solutions for everybody so everybody's successful. From our, M, our Winslow M365 practice, we've kind of evolved as the years have went on. So just some of the areas that we focus in with um, SharePoint OneDrive, Hosted Exchange, uh, Entra, Azure AD, Intune, Defender, now Copilot coming uh, full swing with that on the Azure infrastructure side, Azure Virtual Desktop, and then obviously still the, the on-prem resources. We have those expertise there to help you out with whatever you need. Um, from an implementation standpoint, we do things such as audits, full uh, projects, block hours, um, anything to try to get you any type of resolution that you need on that. Um, we, we do have a Microsoft 365 uh, through Northstar uh, co-managed offering where if you do need some assistance and some monitoring with Office 365 um, in any of those different pieces of the tenant, that is something that we could do to help out and help leverage that gap that you might have on questions or issues or anything like that. And you can just reach out to us um, from a consulting standpoint. We, we wanna help you to understand the complex nature of Microsoft licensing to hardware, to any of those services needing to get set up. Um, we're a Microsoft Modern Work Solutions partner and we're, we're happy to help. So without further ado, um, what is Copilot at the end of the day? This has been a super hot button topic as we've went over the past couple months. And when you look at the, the structure of that, it's the large language models that they have, the, the Microsoft graph on the back end that's kind of interpreting the data. We'll kind of do a little bit more of a deeper dive on that. And obviously all those 365 apps to try to get the, the best out of it and really make that as efficient as possible for your end users. I think at this stage of the game, it's been I mean, it's a Super Bowl commercial. It's been on LinkedIn everywhere. A lot of employees and leaders are ready to embrace AI. Um, you could see 64% of employees lack the time and energy to do their job. 70% um, of employees are willing to delegate work to AI. It, it's there to assist at the end of the day. It's not there to replace. Um, it, it's really trying to make things as efficient as possible for your employees and to get the, the bottom line met at the end of the day. Taking a look at the architecture of what the Copilot infrastructure looks like, you can kind of see the data flow. It's a definitely a play on words there, but um, the user prompts for the Microsoft 365 apps, they get sent to Copilot um, on the back end graph and the semantic index for the pre-processing where it takes the, the different prompts and the questions that you're asking Copilot and the data sets that it's looking for um, and it sends that prompt to the large language model. Then Copilot receives that large language model response back. Um, then Copilot assesses graph and the semantic index for post-processing. And then Copilot sends that response. All of that's happening split second, depending on what app you're in, things of what you're looking for it to do. It might be a little bit longer if it's something bigger or doing a big data set hunt. Um, and obviously all these requests are encrypted over HTTPS. So the data is as secure as possible. And that's one big thing that you'll see as we go through these slides that I just wanna stress is you gotta keep your data safe. Um, a lot of customers that we've had conversations with, 
they've may, may, maybe moved that workload from on-prem to cloud and those permissions, any of those type of folders or anything like that that you put up there, maybe it's a little out of, out of sorts and it just kind of got moved up there. So with Copilot now and getting access to a lot of data, you really want to have that data as secure as possible. So we'll go through a, a bunch of different strategies on how to make that as effective as possible. So the data is protected at the end of the day. There's a lot of Copilots, um, so many different ones that it's almost confusing. So you are getting your Windows updates coming down. There's Copilot and Bing and Edge. Um, there's uh, Copilot right on the desktop of Windows 11. Then there's the licensing of Copilot to go within your Office 365 apps. There's Sales Copilot, there's Dynamic Copilot. You can see there's for data and analytics. The new one is the Security Copilot that is assisting with Defender and Intune to help um, facilitate those security questions or issues or going through that management. So there's a lot to digest and it's easy to get confused. So hopefully today we can kind of take some of those questions away for you. Taking a full picture at it, I mean, it almost doesn't fit on the screen at the end of the day. There's so many things that AI has its hands in and that just goes to say how important it is to make sure that the data that is being shared with Copilot in that language model, that it is secured so it doesn't go in the wrong hands at the end of the day and it gets leaked out or whatever the case, but still at the end of the day, those secure sessions are going over HTTPS, but we really wanna make sure that the data has the right labeling, it has the right permissions in place, so it is as secure as possible. Starting to talk a little bit about licensing of Copilot. You can see, regardless, um, depending on the, the version of Windows you have, you, you have a kind of baked in Copilot to help out with a little bit of questions, kind of almost like the Siri, the Alexa, things like that. Um, and then for individuals, there's a Copilot Pro which does get that um, 365 app integration added into it. And then obviously the, the Copilot for 365, which is the $30 per user per month with an annual commitment um, that has a lot more in depth compared to what the Copilot Pro would be. And then that also comes with licensing for Copilot Studio to kind of build your own um, Copilots for, for different use cases and efficiencies that we'll dive into a little bit later as well. When we really start to take a look to like what I said with making sure the data is protected, um, you kind of base it off of what license that you have. So with all of these different customers, there's a lot of smaller customers, bigger customers, and you might be an E, you might be a business premium depending on that case. So when I take a look and think about the different types of security and compliance controls that are needed for Copilot, um, this was a really good chart that I came across that breaks all of those things down. So big things that Microsoft is pushing at the end of the day, DLP policies, labeling policies for all those SharePoint and OneDrive pieces, um, making sure that you have your audit logs in order and you're getting all of the different type of alerts and things like that to make sure that you are protected. Um, even on the identity side, you'll also see a little bit later too, just making sure that you have your proper conditional access um, policies in place and having these other policies like DLP and labeling just to make sure that unsafe data is staying where it needs to be and it's only being accessed by the people that need to access it. So if you take that chart and kind of try to make it a little bit more easy to digest and you don't have to squint to see all of that stuff, um, you can really get going and this is more structured on this screenshot to any of the, the enterprise customers, but from a business premium, business standard perspective, you can still get some of these features that come with it too, just depending on what you have access to with that licensing, but you can kind of see the good, better, best. So um, if you did have an Office 365 E3 that doesn't have that mobility, you can still purchase Copilot and get some of those features. You just don't get the conditional access you don't get some of the, the AIP stuff with the labeling and things like that. And then um, endpoint management with, with Intune um, that comes with that mobility license or the enterprise security and mobility E3, E5 type of thing. Or you get more of like the Cadillac or the the, the, the big Boeing jet at that point. If 
talking about Copilot and airlines and things like that, where it's that best in class where you're getting all of those add-ons that are already coming with the enterprise mobility and security E3, and then you're enhancing it even more um, with automatic sensitivity labeling instead of just a manual push. Um, you're, you're getting Defender for Cloud apps in there. So you're really controlling that data that's coming in and out of being ingested in that Microsoft tenant and putting policy in place and putting controls in to make sure that that data is being protected at the end of the day. So now actually starting to talk a little bit about Copilot itself, we start looking at those use cases. So it really starts with the prompt. Um, no matter if you're in Teams, you're in Outlook, you're on your desktop, you're in um, Edge doing these type of queries, if you will. Um, so you're, if you break it down, I, I have a link in here that Microsoft has that kind of has some examples of the different Copilot prompt ideas that you can use at the end of the day. Um, it really starts off with you're telling Copilot what you're looking for. So whether you're looking to do something to a document, you're looking to edit a text, get some assistance with this, take a bunch of emails and try to summarize it so you can go make a presentation or maybe beef up that PowerPoint presentation or you couldn't make that meeting, but you need to take notes on it. Um, you're telling what Copilot needs at the end of the day. So you're starting to structure your prompt from what that initial question would be. And you can kind of see what it looks like here where you're establishing a goal you're putting in that context of what do you actually need out of it where are we getting that source data from and then what's the expectation out of it once copilot goes out talks to the large language model gets everything where it needs to be and starts to bring it back to you um, you can keep that conversation going. I know specifically, I, I wanted to test it out on my computer to see what was going on with it. And so make me a statement of work and how to migrate uh, an exchange migration from on-prem to Office 365. It gave me some data, it looked pretty good. I said, give me more detail at the end of the day. And it went back out and provided me with more detail. So it's almost like a, a conversation at the end of the day to really try to get exactly what you need out of it at the end of the day. Um, and you could see just some other helpful hints. Um, there are certain limits with Copilot. They're adjusting them at this point. I know I've had some conversations with customers where they were summarizing email and it only has a limit for so many characters of, of what it's searching for. Um, so if you have a crazy extensive long email, it may only go down so far. Um, obviously be professional. Um, try to communicate clearly to it with proper punctuation and things like that so it understands it correctly. Um, and if for some reason, start a new topic if you're, you're moving on to something else depending on the app. If we start to break down the capabilities of Copilot by the function, um, starting with HR, just some potential, just getting the idea pot going, figuring out what can Copilot do for me at the end of the day. Um, so from an HR perspective, it can communicate policies, draft job descriptions. Um, if they're using PowerPoint or, or Word or any of those other ones to create training materials, um, have automations in place for job applicants. Um, and, and the possibilities are endless. These are just some ideas at the end of the day. From a marketing perspective, it can start a first draft from a project. It can summarize campaign results from maybe a list or something like that, or starting to analyze the data from an Excel spreadsheet to make powerful visuals for your presentation. Same thing on the sales front. It can analyze that sales data from previous quarters and kind of slice and dice that data to really make a good presentation or conglomerate a bunch of different use cases from Teams data, from SharePoint and OneDrive data to get that proposal ready for you. Even on the IT standpoint, it's not looking to replace us, but even in our case, you may have a quick question that you want to see what an answer would be to or what would a strategy look like to maybe migrate from point a to point b on something so copilot can help create that project plan um, if obviously all of us here in the it industry we're wearing a lot of hats we have a lot of things going on um, you can kind of get a summary of email so you know what's important it's getting that extra hand at the end of the day instead of being replaced um, even just taking a data set and trying to find patterns to solve the data quicker. So you get the tickets out, you get the projects implemented quicker so you can move on to the next piece or you can put more focus into those security pieces at the end of the day that 
you have 10 other things going on. And even from a finance standpoint, just simplifying financial reporting and planning or maybe reaching out to Copilot to see if there are any improvements on things that could be done and building those report metrics and getting the professional charts. So it's not just the data, it's the data with the visuals to really kind of piece it all together. Picking on some different areas to just hone down a little bit more before we kind of dive into the different parts of the 365 apps. Um, Microsoft kind of gave some examples of you're an executive and you're preparing for a company-wide address. So you could see, you can go in and summarize emails and chats for the past week that mention your end results. So you're starting to gather your data. You're generating a list out of teams. You're going into Word to write that speech. Well, Copilot can help you with that. And then taking that data that you wrote in the speech and having Copilot help you write the invitation. Um, and then you can go back and if you were using Teams and you had transcription on and things like that, you can go summarize last year's meeting and give some of those numbers and some of those details. And then if you're building that presentation to go for, for go time there, then you can have Copilot refine your presentation to make it look a little bit more professional or maybe get it a little bit more concise if it's kind of all over the place from an operations perspective. So an example here would be solving a production issue um, with Copilot, kind of given some assistance. So there was a data set that came in that you needed to analyze on the production issue. Give me the insights on it. So maybe it's a different viewpoint that might point something out. Um, finding information or troubleshooting on production equipment or, or manuals just to how to do something. Um, you're, you're reaching out to Copilot to see what exists out there to get that help. Um, you could use whiteboard, it integrates with whiteboard so you can organize ideas and kind of have that conglomerate of figuring out what our next steps gonna be. Um, maybe you have a production issue that you had a Teams meeting on, you can go summarize the meeting notes from that from Teams. Um, obviously the, the issue got figured out, uh, you got everything situated, well, you can have Copilot draft a prompt for a thank you. And then maybe from an executive standpoint, they're asking for a root cause analysis you can use Copilot with PowerPoint to put together a presentation to make sure that it got fully understood as to what happened, what got done, and what's going to get done in the future to prevent it. So if we start to take a look at the different pieces to the puzzle of what Copilot could do, um, we're kind of focusing on the big five. So with Teams, um, I, you can have it catch up on chats if you were out of office. Um, you can also use Copilot, you can see in the, the bottom screenshot there to maybe find documents buried in emails or presentations or calendar invites all through Teams itself. Um, if you are having that meeting, you could see on the fly, based off the data that's coming in, you can actually send commands to it to create a table for those production timelines or give me a summary of those meeting notes to get ready to go send out after the meeting's over. In Excel, super powerful. You can use Copilot to generate formulas, um, help you focus if it's a large data set on what matters. Ask Copilot to give you insights on that data to see if it can come across anything or take those deeper dives on that data um, to figure out what needs to be done. I'm not an Excel expert, sometimes uh, pivot table or something like that, I'm having a hard time with. Well, I'm gonna go send it to Copilot and see if, he, if they can go figure it out. From a word perspective, super powerful. Um, you can have Copilot start with drafting a document and then you can see in that bottom screenshot, you're referencing an existing file in there. Um, maybe you received a document that could be a contract or something like that, that is 30, 40 pages long. Go to Copilot, give me a summary. Let's start there just to start understanding that document to get it better. Um, Maybe you have an existing document, you want someone to take a look at it to see how the language of that document is. It's still learning. I, I, through my experience, it seems like Copilot's still maybe a little bit more robotic at that point, but as time goes on, I expect the more data that it ingests that it's gonna give that kind of less robotic response and with a little bit more personality added to it to help um, write that document or get something out the door. Outlook, like I talked about before, maybe it is a long email string, hit the summarize button. Um, you have to draft an email out to talk about an image coming up or something like that. Have Copilot help you with that. 
you were out on vacation for a week and you got that well-rested time off and you're coming back to a 500 emails, 1,000 emails that you want to make sure that you get figured out and start to think, where do I even start? Go as co-pilot. Let them get that summarized and um, point out what maybe you need to focus on first. PowerPoint, I, I've used this one um, several times before. Long presentations, can you summarize it? Um, you have a data set. Can you help me craft a presentation on that data set where it can pull in charts and things like that and, and bits and pieces from a Word document to get you situated? So that's just tipping the iceberg on those 365 apps. There's a lot that is still capable behind the scenes, but just to kind of get your feet wet with as far as what maybe you could do um, with Copilot. Starting to focus on maybe a little bit of a different angle. Um, Copilot for Security, I think came out um, maybe about a little over a month ago or so now. So really giving IT admins at the end of the day, I would love to play around with this one a lot more from an Intune perspective to start analyzing that Intune data to understand why is this policy not applying or from a defender aspect to analyze a malicious script with a button click we have so many things on our plate and maybe we aren't a sock at the end of the day. Copilot for security could be something that you could see where you send the initial question to it or start hunting for whatever could be that potential threat or maybe looking at vulnerabilities and trying to get an understanding as far as what, what, what should I tackle first. Um, Copilot for security could be an option. And from a licensing perspective, it still is a little bit confusing and completely changing the way that they're looking at it, but um, it's price per hour for security compute units. So um, Microsoft recommends three compute units per hour, um, but this is something that you can play with and test with because you're only getting charged for what you actually use. So if you are running it 24 seven, yeah, well, if you ran one SCU unit for a full month nonstop, well, that's what the price is gonna be on that. But if you're only using it for a half hour here, an hour there, and then depending on how much data is being ingested into that Copilot for security, it is something I think that a lot of customers should play with and see what the capabilities of it are to help with Defender, help with Intune. The other piece that you were entitled to at the end of the day when you did purchase your Copilot um, for M365 licensing was Copilot Studio. I definitely see a lot more coming out with this. Um, it, it's one area that I'm starting to play with myself because I see a lot of value from it where you essentially can build your own custom Copilots. So you can create custom Copilots and GPTs. You can connect in different type of um, AI technologies. You could essentially customize Copilot to, to how you need it to be. Um, and then you can see there's over 1200 data connectors in there. And you know, when you're in the Copilot studio, they give you some ideas as far as what you could do with it to maybe help an automated process or something like that. So you're kind of building your own Copilot alongside with what Microsoft's Copilot is. So that's a cool one. I, I definitely like where that one's going. And like I said, I wanna learn a lot more about it myself to see those efficiencies and things like that, that that really could deliver at the end of the day. So talking about the security, as we kind of get things wrapped up here, um, these are the big four areas that we want to focus on, the, the Entra ID side with the device management, if you are using Microsoft Intune, protecting that data with DLP and uh, labeling policies, and then depending on your license, um, going through Microsoft Defender for cloud apps to kind of discover and control that data that's going in and out of the ecosystem. So starting with Entra ID, again, depending on that, if you have a plan one or plan two license, um, making sure that you have conditional access policies in place, making sure you have the monitoring in place. So that attack vector, those potential threats coming in are being protected and you're not having that exposure that way. Obviously, from a device standpoint with Microsoft Intune, you could push the updates, you can push the patches out, you could push um, security features and things like that. That is another control to make sure that your data is protected at the end of the day. 
this one's my biggest one, um, the, the purview side of the house. So having those DLP policies established, making sure that your auditing is put in place. So you know if the data is sensitive or not, and you're sending that data to the large language model of Copilot to make sure that it is protected. So those are definitely some areas from a Winslow perspective, we can help leverage that gap and help you figure out what is going on with your data and how to better protect it at the end of the day. And then, like I said, from a licensing perspective, trying to see if you do have it, usually this comes with the E5s or you're purchasing an add-on for it, um, you could block those 400 plus different applications in your organization and approve and block those different AI apps that might be communicating with your Office 365 tenant with the Defender. So a lot of granularity there to further enhance the protection of that data. And then you can see as a whole, that kind of bundles everything together. Um, that's Microsoft's recommended approach that they're looking to push. But like I said, that one really comes down to the licensing that you have and what features that you're using. But my big one to focus in on would be number three with the, the information protection. So how much time can you save for people using Copilot? This is a big investment. It's $30 per user a month times 12. That's 360 bucks a user a year for this. Um, you could just see in some of the, the, the metrics that they've proven at the end of the day, if an end user is able to save 2.0 hours a month, that return on investments 180% on that. So while it does look, and I like from an approach of a co-pilot standpoint to basically start with a pilot program where you only have those key stakeholders or um, maybe selected groups and start to focus on those areas first while you're getting your data protected, while all those pieces to the puzzle are getting put in place. And then it might not be for everybody. It might only be for a select subset of your organization. So it there is a good potential of an ROI on something like this. And if you are analyzing, um, trying to figure out, how do I get value out of this? This was a good um, chart kind of an eye chart on this one, but just seeing um, what can I use this for? So you could see with Word, with Teams, how to have more efficient meetings. Um, how much more effective can my end users be at the end of the day? So that was a lot of data to try to ingest. Maybe you need some assistance. Maybe you want a second set of eyes on it. Maybe you need some help with getting this implemented. How can Winslow help at the end of the day? So we like to break it down in three different areas from a technical audit perspective, um, the, the getting AI ready services and assessments that we can do or doing a full blown deplo deployment of Copilot. So from a technical audit, if you just want, maybe you, you have a lot of different pieces in the Office 365 tenant and you want a second set of eyes on it so you're ensuring best practices, our team can go in and do that security assessment. You will have a document at the end of the day and we can even throw hours in for, um, for mitigation to help eliminate out those potential security threats. But that's just the tenant configuration itself, identity with Azure AD and Entra, um, Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, Intune, Defender, Compliance, all of those pieces, we can deliver a technical audit on that. And that's a report that you'll have at the end of the day. So you know what your security posture is and what you could do to get more efficient going forward. Like I said, we do have those AI ready services. This is really gonna focus on, depending on your licensing, the, the AIP and DLP um, policies. So we'll get the enhanced security, the data management, the AI performance, increase those efficiencies and give that better user experience for the users at the end of the day. And then we have the co-pilot um, deployment services where we'll make sure we talk about licensing and have those assessments to make sure that you're ready get the data governance, get the security put in place, and then help with the training and the adoption for you and your end users at the end of the day um, to really get the full use out of Copilot because it is a big investment at the end of the day. But like I said, it, it, it is a lot to take in. We are more than happy to have sit down conversations and talk about how Copilot could be effective for you. But is big it is up and coming i definitely think there's a lot of value in what it could bring and it keeps continuing to get better as time goes on but reach out to us we're happy to get a conversation going um like i said we kind of ran out of time for questions today here but um we'll definitely get them answered uh, if you want to get a call set up 
just to discuss what you need, um, reach out to us. We're happy to um, assist and try to get whatever you need done at the end of the day. So appreciate everyone joining today and I hope you have a great day.